good day to you and welcome to a short documentary of Jim Crow laws. A very difficult, gut-wrenching time to be black in America. Lasting from 1865, the moment slavery was abolished, to 1968. With remnant of it still lurking in this country, as you can tell from the summer of 2020, where the nation was split in writing due to racial discrimination and racial prejudice, which led to black civilians' deaths. In this documentary, we will discuss Jim Crow laws, a time where it was legal to separate blacks from whites, which led to quite a number of outbringings from black people. We have Kyle Cooper on the first slide informing us how Jim Crow laws originated. How the Jim Crow laws originated. The Jim Crow laws were originated in the late 19th and 20th centuries by white Democrat dominated state legislators. They were made to disenfranchise and remove political and economic gains made by black people during the Reconstruction period. Once the Jim Crow laws began, it was kind of a shocker to a lot of blacks because some thought slavery and oppression to African Americans were over. By a shocker, when I meant what I meant by a shocker was African Americans weren't used to being slave enslaved because it's been such it was such a long time before like you know Africans were free and they felt a little bit of freedom. So when this was when the Jim Crow laws happened, that little bit of freedom was taken from them because they thought they were free for a long time. But so once the Jim Crow laws happened, a lot of blacks felt depressed and felt the same way they did in the days when black people were enslaved by Caucasians. This is when the this is when the Jim Crow laws originated. Some Jim Crow laws were number one, black people couldn't look a white man into the eye. All right, so now the reason a black man couldn't look a white man into the eye because it was a sign of disrespect. I don't know why white people thought it was disrespectful, but they just thought it was. So anytime a black man would come and look in a, a, a white man in his eye, it would be disrespectful. Sometimes they would take him off of the bus. Sometimes they would take him to the back or beat him. Even sometimes, believe it or not, lynch them. So if you were, if a black man were looking a white man to an eye, they could either go to jail, they could be lynched, uh, which was not uh, illegal at this time, but they would still do it. And cops wouldn't care because they were black. But number two, there were colored water fountains and Caucasian water fountains. Color only used color. The reason they had different water fountains was it's kind of self-explanatory because they thought black people were dogs and that we didn't have as much royalty as whites. So the the whites had a little pearly, you know, pearly water fountain. And the blacks had a little, you know, dirty. It was all, sometimes there would be lead in the water. Sometimes the water was dirty. And the whites had regular water. I came, you know what I'm saying? That was fresh and clean. And blacks had bad water fountain. But number three, blacks had to sit in the back of the bus, never the front. As you guys know, I'm pretty sure everybody knows the Rosa Parks story. The reason blacks had to sit in the back of the bus is because whites, this was another form of disrespect on the whites' behalf. They thought that if a black person were to ever sit in the front of a bus, it was very disrespectful and uncalled for. So that's why blacks had to sit in the back of the bus. Also, sometimes when the blacks would come in and sit in the front, a uh, police officer would have to come remove them, as you know, by the Rosa Parks story. A lot of stuff would happen. So this is why blacks had to sit in the back of the bus, never the front. The next slide is called What Happened During the Jim Crow Laws. This slide was created by Alvaro Gonzalez. All right, next slide. All right, so pretty much what this is, this slide is about is um what happened during the Jim Crow Laws. One of the main events that occurred during the Jim Crow Laws was that there was a group called the Ku Klux Klan also known as the KKK. They were born in the year of 1865 in Pulaski, Tennessee. The KKK was a private club which works for the Confederate veterans. They said, the KKK, they said that they were only here for good, but all they did was get rid of African Americans. So they they weren't really so good, but they claimed they were a, a good um clan. Another main event that happened during the, the Jim Crow law was a lady named Rosa Parks who was told to sit in the back of the bus because she was African American, but she refused to sit in the back of the bus and sat in the front of the bus where all the whites sat. When Rosa Parks did this, it caused an uproar. Like Kyle was saying, it was illegal for African Americans to sit in the front where whites sat. It, it was um, it was coordinated where blacks sat in the back and whites sat in the front. 
All right, so um, that's the end of my slide. So um, the next slide is on how Jim Crow laws end. This slide was created by Smudge Tony L, but couldn't record. So Kyle Cooper will be reading his slide for him. Please enjoy. How did the Jim Crow laws end? In 1964, President Lyndon Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act. In the 1965 Voting Rights Act, it halted efforts that the kinds of, under, of people under 18 to vote. The Fair Housing Act of 1968 ended the discrimination in renting and selling homes. Jim Crow laws were off books and had not always guaranteed full integration or anti-racist laws throughout the United States. So, Basically, a bill was passed in 1968 that was supposedly supposed to sign off the Jim Crow laws. Now, in my opinion, I believe, this is my opinion, I believe that segregation still goes on even today. Even though we're not forced to be segregated, I feel there is a part of us that is still segregated. I say this because, you know, black people kind of kin to black people now and white people kind of kin to white people. It's like... um. You know, black people like to stay around their kind more so, and whites like to stay around their kind. Like, for example, like when it's a, you see a lot of black schools, only black, Hispanics, you know, different ethnicities. You never see really white people in black people's school, like in a, you know, a, a diverse type of thing. It's usually white people have their school and blacks, Latinos, Hispanics have their other school. So, what I'm saying is, it's still kind of a part of segregation. And as you know, even though Jim Crow laws are not a thing anymore, they're, st they're still kind of there because, as you know, over the summer, you know, we had difficulties with Jim Crow, um, George Floyd, my bad, not Jim Crow, George Floyd. And, uh, you know, he, uh, the officer sat on his neck, not sat on his neck, put a knee on his neck while he kept saying, I can't breathe, pleading, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. I know y'all saw that, the no riots aboard and everything. So basically what I'm trying to say is segregation, in my opinion, is not over. You know, it might be out of the books, but it's still not over. The last slide in this documentary is made by Eric Walker, where he talks about the everlasting impact of the Jim Crow laws. Please enjoy. This is the everlasting impact of the Jim Crow laws. The everlasting impact of the Jim Crow laws is still affecting us even in the 20th century. Here's an example. In New York, 2009, Senator Montgomery and Assemblyman Wright introduced the Voting Rights Notification and Registration. This allowed people to know what their voting rights were and whether they were eligible to vote. Due to this, black people had to be U.S. citizens, while white people did not do so. That's right. Even though white people did not, most white people weren't white U.S. citizens because they were not of age. They did not try because they were already able to vote. Black people had to, though. Even after this, even after blacks became U.S. citizens, they were still not able to vote. After blacks were able to vote, white people still try to separate black. Another example, let's talk about the George Floyd case. Kyle had already brought this up in the last slide, but I'm put it into more detail. The George Floyd case where a white officer was told by bystanders and George Floyd himself that he couldn't breathe. The officer did not listen, not even a little bit. As a result, George Floyd has suffocated. The officer who had his knee on George Floyd's neck did not go to jail or even had his job taken away. He was let off with a little warning. This is an example of racism. Due to this, riots have started around the city and stuff that happened, which was the past year, 2020. And that concludes the slides.